Good morning. I'm just heading out to uh, do some brush cutting. Getting quite excited now because although today is going to be quite hot up to about 30 after today the temperatures look like they're settling down to something I would recognize as being appropriate for autumn and the lawns are starting to slow down a bit it's been more than a week since I've made this lawn and usually that spells disaster but it's looking not too bad I'm taking the brush cutter up the fire break just because the grass up there is getting a bit tall and then I'm going to take it and do the creek walk footpaths and I might do the footpath that goes over the bridge to the neighbouring property and I'm actually getting quite excited maybe, maybe we're approaching ish maybe in another month or so the end of the lawn mowing season which is always a massive relief for me. Also now that um, lawn mowing season is slowly waning I think I'm going to replace the head on my brush cutter from the cord back to the disc and I'm also going to look at actually getting a saw cutting blade for that because this could be very useful for projects I've got in mind in the backwoods. But anyway, uh, I'll get on to that when it becomes relevant. For now, I'm off to do some footpath maintenance with the brush cutter on what could be the last hot day of this summer slash autumn. Bye bye Chuff. <laughs> there we go then. I know uh, there was no before, but essentially what I've done is I've gone up the middle and along the edge and also behind me. If I get the chance today, I also do, as you can probably see, need to go up this side as well. But I'm going to prioritise the footpaths first, uh, just in the knowledge that it's going to get quite hot relatively soon. Um, and you know there comes a point where it's just not pleasant to do this sort of work so I'm going to concentrate on the footpaths and then if I can I'll do this side I'm waiting for bonfire season so what I can do then is trim this back uh, I like to do that maybe a couple of times a year as I say I know that this isn't necessarily uh, textbook fire break uh, management but I don't mind that as a hedge and I know full well that fire breaks don't always do the job that you think they're going to so I don't mind this bit of a hedge here but I will trim it back when I can burn what I trim anyway I'm off now to top up the old trusty brush cutter which I still can't speak highly enough about it's amazing it's one of the best purchases we've made and uh, I'm going to carry on with the footpath work come down to the creek walk <clears throat> the creek spec to being a, more of a sort of dribble hasn't rained a lot lately let's go and check out what sort of state we're in down here I, I can see already that there's quite a lot of uh, vegetation which I do need to trim back that's not urgent that can wait um, until it's bonfire time I'm more focused on what the ground's doing so far so good we've got the one footpath there and the branch there which goes up the hill mostly what I'm looking for at the minute is if we've got any trees that have come down so far I'm not seeing any let's go and quickly have a look this is where I'm going to be putting a bench 
So yes, as you can see. Very, very little rain. For quite some time now, actually. Oh, you can see the sun's creeping up over the trees now. Beautiful, thin autumn morning light. Now that the sun's over the trees, so it means that I don't have long before it's going to get hot, hot, hot. What's that? Okay. Looks like I've got maybe a bit of a a bit of a snap there. Nothing I can't manage or that needs to be dealt with imminently. This part's okay. This part's okay. It's obviously just a bit tea tree. That can wait. And then we go back up the hill. So, much to my surprise, <laughs> really none of the pomoderish trees have fallen over. They do like to fall over. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about coming and clearing, clearing the footpath really. It's just a bit of this annoying regrowth well, growth of these shrubs which line the root. But I can deal with that. I don't know when the fire ban's going to lift. Well, you can have fires all year round if you've got a permit, but I choose to not get a permit and only have bonfires at the time of the year where you don't need a permit. And currently that ends well, that begins on the 1st of May. That's default for the whole state. But the local authorities will check and assess local conditions. And that date can be brought forward or, I guess, pushed back. I'm hoping that our date will get pushed forward because we've basically been on the lower end of the fire danger ratings the whole summer so maybe I'll be able to start having bonfires in April which is not that long so maybe in about four weeks time that's my hope so in four weeks time I can come down and start trimming these bushes so that's not too long to wait they're not going to grow hugely in that time what I can do is keep the path nice and clear at foot level, so that's what I'm going to do now. As I go about the property doing these maintenance tasks, especially as we get towards autumn, I'm constantly thinking about what my next projects are going to be in terms of property work. Once the fire bonfire period starts, I've already got one major project in mind, which I'll talk about when we get to it. But I've decided that a sort of side project that I'd like to, to get on with is here. I've just strimmed up the hill of, from the uh, creek walk. This is where you come down the hill and turn the corner. And here, beyond this fallen tree, was um, access to our swimming pool which is over there and then the creek which turns the corner there and as you can see um, the pomodoros trees and other shrubs have grown up which has blocked their access to that now we don't actually swim in there um, but nevertheless it's still relatively nice a place to go which is now rendered a bit difficult so my intention here is to make this a little side project, re-establish access to this part of the creek walk. There is a fallen tree down there which you may not be able to see. What I might do is saw a chunk out of that to render access even easier. And then we'll have a nice little adjunct to the creek walk 
taking us into this area. I do like to keep busy. Quite a lot of what I do on the property now, now that we're better established, is maintenance, just maintaining what we've achieved. But nevertheless, there are still projects which are outstanding. My major one for this year, things like that that I've just showed you. I've got footpath work to do on the footpath in the backwoods. I do like to keep busy. I'm here to catch you up on something which I've been keeping you in the dark regarding largely because I wanted to see how it was going to pan out before stringing you along with week after week of uh, boring updates. So <laughs> what I'm going to do now is take you back in time to just after my birthday, around about the time of my birthday which was in mid-February. Um, I'll tell you what happened. I'll come back and update you and then I will uh, end the vlog this week. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm afraid I've got some some bad news to share with you. Uh, unfortunately, as I was coming home today, I, um, I hit a wallaby leapt out in front of me, which they have a want to do. In all the seven years I've lived here, I've been pretty good at spotting them and avoiding them, but this one was hidden in the shadows and literally leapt out just as I was going past. And I hit it and it died. But also it has caused this damage to the front of my car and has damaged the um, internal radiator and heating and cooling so that currently the Vitara is undrivable and the engine gets so hot that uh, it, it barely functions if you go any distance. Luckily we weren't too far from home, Will was in the car at the time, we were coming back from town. So I was able to get the car home the car is insured and because I c I'm uncomfortable driving it to two trucks coming to collect it as we speak. My grave concern is that although the car's a year old the insurance company will decide to write it off. So I know this might sound weird but um, I've just cleaned it because if this car is about to die, I um, would like it to have some dignity. I know the fact that I sound and am in fact so emotional about it probably sounds ridiculous, don't get me wrong, I know that worse things could have happened and will explain what happened to his colleagues and um, they have all sorts of tales of terrible things that have happened to people who have hit animals. Um, I know a story which I'm not going to repeat here which involved someone hitting a cow which ended very tragically. So these things happen, I understand that, and besides car accidents other terrible things happen. People get very very bad news all the time. But um, although I don't like to show it, um, and I've often been described as cold in the past, <laughs> I am actually deep down quite an emotional person and I genuinely love that car. Uh, it, it sort of represents more to me than just a car, it, it kind of represents freedom. My previous car was very inadequate and unfit for purpose, which meant that I was very limited in where and I could go and when. So the, the fuel economy was through the roof, you could hardly go anywhere, but also it didn't have functioning air conditioning, which meant driving in the summer was basically impossible. And there were a couple of summers in a row where I had to evacuate because of bushfire with Vita. And, and the noises that she made evacuating in that unair conditioned car in that heat, was it was like she was choking to death. Those, those sounds will haunt me. So. We, we 
took the plunge and took the opportunity when the opportunity arose. We didn't seek this opportunity, but when the opportunity arose, because Will's other car died and we needed at least one reliable car. At that time, Will had his Hyundai, the engine died, and I had the Barina, which wasn't usable most of the year. We took the plunge and got this new car, which we hoped would um, see us through many, many, many years. We've no intention of selling it. We don't buy cars to sell them on. We buy cars to keep them until they die of a natural old age, and then we would replace it. But so far, <laughs> the very first day I drove that car properly, a truck kicked up a rock in the windscreen, or a stone, and the windscreen chipped. Day one. And now, almost to the day, a year later, um, I've hit this wallaby and the front of the car and the internals are damaged. So, um, who knows what's going to happen. I hope it's, it's fixable. I don't want to lose this car. I genuinely love this car. But, uh, anyway, that's the horrible thing that happened to us today. It's not always fun here. So sadly, uh, the car was written off. Um, the new engine was almost about the same price as the car. So the insurance company decided that it was a total loss. Um, the type of insurance that we had, however, means that the insurance company are providing us with a brand new replacement car and that should arrive sometime in early April so as I'm filming this in a couple of weeks time give or take and it will be delivered to our house it is in every respect a completely identical replacement car even down to the colour the only thing that will be different is it will have a different licence plate so it sort of ended well um, I was very sad to see the other car go though, as you may have noticed, I felt very strongly about that car. It meant a lot to me, but I had a suspicion this is what was going to happen. Not that I enjoy being proven right on this occasion. Anyway, so it ended badly for that car, but it hasn't ended entirely badly. Although I am now concerned about what our insurance premium is likely to be for the new car, but we'll find we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyway, so that's what's been happening the past months. Not not brilliant. We've been getting by with Will's car and also a friend of ours has been very kind to lend me his car. So I've been getting around in this absolutely gigantic truck of a thing, like you know, be twice the size of a Range Rover, it's huge as a lot of cars here are. Anyway, that's that. I will see you next week. <laughs>